Human Growth and Development. This information can be found in chapters 11 and 12 of your textbook. Growth refers to physical changes that are measured and occur in a steady, orderly manner. Growth is measured in weight, height, and changes in appearance and body function. Development relates to changes in mental, emotional, and social function. A person behaves and thinks in a certain way in each stage of development. The rate of growth and development varies with each person. Growth and development stages vary among experts. Principles of growth and development. Growth and development overlap, depend on each other, and occur at the same time. The process starts at fertilization and continues until death. The process proceeds from simple to most complex. The process occurs in simple directions. The process occurs in a sequence, order, and pattern. Milestones track progress. The rate of growth and development is uneven. The term stage refers to a period of time or age range when a person learns certain skills. A milestone is a behavior or skill that occurs in a certain stage of development. Milestones involve physical growth and movement, language and communication, social and emotional change, and cognitive changes. Growth and development affects the whole person. An example of how growth and development overlap, depend on each other and occur at the same time, is an infant, the infant coos and babbles, which is development, when the physical structures for speech are strong enough, which is growth. Here is an example of how growth and development proceeds from simple to complex. A baby sits before standing, stands before walking, and walks before running. Here is an example of how the processes of growth and development occur in certain directions. So from head to toe, babies hold their heads up before sitting. From the center of the body outward, babies control shoulder movements before controlling fine hand movements. The stages of development cannot be skipped. Each stage is the basis for the next stage. The rate of growth and development is uneven. A developmental task is a skill that must be completed during a stage of development for development to continue. For example, an infant must learn to walk in order to become less dependent as a toddler. Infancy refers to the time from birth through one year. Neonate is the first month of life. During that time, um, the newborns have reflexes, which are involuntary movements that decline and disappear as the central nervous system develops. The moral reflex or startle reflex occurs when the baby is startled by a loud noise, a sudden movement, or the head falling back. The arms are thrown apart, the legs extend and then flex, and a brief cry is common. The rooting reflex occurs when the cheek is touched near the mouth. The mouth opens and the head turns toward the touch. This reflex is needed for feeding. The sucking reflex occurs when the lips are touched. The palmer grasp reflex occurs when the palm is stroked. The fingers close firmly around the object. The step or dance reflex occurs when the baby is held upright and the feet touch a surface. The feet move up and down in stepping motions. Infancy is the first stage of life. Growth and development is rapid during this time. During this stage, infants learn to walk, eat solid foods, begin to talk, learn to trust, and develop stable sleep and feeding patterns. Infants are bottle or breastfed. Toddlerhood is years one through three. The growth rate in toddlerhood is slower than during infancy. Toddlers learn to walk well. They touch, taste, smell, and climb to explore their surroundings. Toddlers engage in parallel play. 
Toddlers play along other side, alongside other children, but not with them. Toddlers are possessive and do not understand sharing. Temper tantrums and saying no are common during this stage. During toddlerhood, toddlers learn to tolerate separation from the primary caregiver. They gain control of bowel and bladder functions. They use words to communicate and become less dependent on the primary caregiver. Preschool is three to six years. Preschool children grow about two to three inches a year and gain about five pounds a year. Their personal skills increase. They're able to manage clothing, shoes, and buttons, wash hands, brush teeth, and feed themselves, and also help with some chores. Preschool children play with others and learn to share. They tease, tattle, and tell fibs. Preschoolers increase their ability to communicate and understand others, perform self-care, learn gender differences and develop sexual modesty, learn right from wrong and good from bad, learn to play with others, and develop family relationships. When in trouble, preschool children may blame a friend or an imaginary friend. Five-year-olds learn to follow rules and be responsible. They are eager to do things right. They learn about manners, independence, and honesty. <clears throat> School age is years six to 10. School age children grow two to three inches a year and gain 4.5 to 6.5 pounds per year. During this stage, baby teeth are lost and permanent teeth erupt. That starts around six years of age. School age children learn teamwork, sportsmanship, and how to follow rules. Quiet play during this time involves collections, board games, video games, and crafts. Play activities often have a purpose and involve work. Peer groups begin to develop. School-aged children develop the social and physical skills needed for playing games. They learn to get along with persons of the same age group and background. They learn behaviors and attitudes common for one's gender. They learn basic reading, writing, and math skills. They develop a conscience and morals. They develop a good feeling and attitude about oneself. School-aged children enjoy performing household tasks. At about age seven, usually boys prefer playing with boys. Girls usually prefer playing with girls. From eight to nine years, play may involve boys and girls. Some show an interest in boy-girl relationships at about eight to nine years. During this stage, peer groups develop. Peers are persons of the same age group and background. Peer groups are important for love, belonging, and self-esteem needs. Late childhood <clears throat> is ages 10 to 12. Pre-adolescence is the time between childhood and adolescence. Many permanent teeth will erupt. Girls will have a growth spurt. The onset of puberty nears. A best friend is common. Children are aware of mistakes and faults of adults. And bullying can occur during this time. Pre-adolescents are expected to become independent of adults and learn to depend on oneself, develop and keep friendships with peers, understand physical, psychological, and social changes, develop moral and ethical behavior, develop greater muscular strength, coordination, and balance, and learn how to study. By age 12, girls are taller and heavier than boys. Puberty is the period when reproductive organs begin to function and secondary sex characteristics appear. In girls, hips widen and breast buds appear. Some 9 to 10 and 11 year old girls begin puberty. During this stage, adult rules and standards are questions. questioned. It is common to rebel against adults and test limits. Bullying is also common during this stage. Bullying is a form of youth violence. It's unwanted aggressive behaviors by a person or group. It could be verbal, social, or physical, or a real sense of power imbalance. Adolescence is the time between puberty and adulthood. It starts with puberty, and children have a significant growth spurt during this time. Girls reach puberty between 9 and 16 years. Boys reach puberty between 10 and 15 years. 
Adolescents need to accept changes in body and appearance, develop appropriate relationships with others, and begin to attract partners, become independent from parents and adults, prepare for marriage and family life, prepare for a career, develop the morals, attitudes, and values needed to function in society. Both boys and girls have a growth spurt during this time. They need about 9.5 hours of sleep. Girls usually complete physical development by age 17. Boys usually stop growing between 18 and 21 years. Adulthood is broken into three different stages. So young adulthood is 18 to 40 years. Mental and social development will continue and growth will slow. Middle adulthood is age 40 to 65 years. That's when physical changes occur. Many are gradual and not noticed. And late adulthood is 65 plus years. Gerontology is the study of the aging process. Geriatrics is the care of aging people. The risk for illness and injury increases with age. There are physical reminders of aging, which include graying hair, wrinkles, and slow movements. These things threaten self-esteem, self-image, self-worth, and independence. And during late adulthood, social roles change. A parent may rely on an adult child for care. Retirees may need activities to replace the work role. People adjust to aging in their own way. How they adjust depends on health status, life experiences, finances, education, and social support systems. People usually retire between 62 and 66. Retirement often means reduced income. Some people may have income from savings, investments, retirement plans, and insurance. There are some different housing options during late adulthood. Um, older adults can live with family. There are respite care and home care agencies that can provide assistance. Respite care at a nursing center is when the person goes to a nursing center for a short time to give family caregivers relief from the person's care. Home health agencies can provide nurses or home health aides. Adult daycare centers provide meals, supervision, activities, transportation, and dementia care. Elder cottage housing opportunity homes are small homes desi designed for older and disabled persons. The portable home is placed in the yard of a single family home. Some echo homes attach to a house as a home addition. Government funding may be available. An accessory dwelling unit is a separate living area in a home or yard. It can be over a garage in the basement in addition to a house or in a side or backyard. It has a kitchen, bedroom, and bathroom. There are also rental options for late adulthood. Senior citizens can rent senior citizen housing or residential hotels. In many areas, state and federal funds support apartment complexes for older and disabled persons. Monthly rents depend on the person's monthly income. A residential hotel refers to the person renting a room or small apartment. Home sharing is another option. It's when two or more people share a house or apartment. They share living spaces, chores, and expenses. There are also multiple group settings that can be options for senior citizens. There are assisted living residents, board and care homes, adult foster care, adult care facilities, continuing care retirement communities, and nursing centers. Assisted living residences are for persons needing help with daily living. Staff are available to assist 24 hours a day. Board and care homes are often private, single family homes. The homes have been adjusted for group living. Rooms are private or shared. Personal care and meals are provided. Nursing and medical care are usually not provided on site. Adult foster care is when an older person lives with a family or a single family home serves four to five persons with special needs. 
the person receives health care and help with personal care and independent living. Adult care facilities are private apartments designed for older people. Buildings have wheelchair access, handrails, elevators, and other safety features. A doctor or nurse is on call. A dining room is common. Rides are provided. Tenants pay monthly rent. A continuing care retirement community offers many services in one location. They range from independent living units to 24-hour nursing care. They meet the changing needs of older persons living alone or with a partner. Services are added as a person's needs change. Nursing centers are an option for persons who cannot care for themselves. To receive Medicare or Medicaid funds, nursing centers must meet the requirements of OBRA. These requirements were put in place to protect the person's rights and promote quality of life.